Ciao a tutti, ciao a tutti. Oggi pomeriggio siamo qui con il regista di Rubicon, Manuel Munoz, e è un regista della categoria Principia Awards, una categoria nata quest'anno per l'Ago Film Festival che vuole premiare e portare alla luce lavori di registi under 25. L'intervista sarà svolta in inglese e potete trovare e vedere il film di Manuel al festival, nella, principalmente nella serata del 26 uh, luglio. So, hi Manuel, thank hi. you for joining us in this interview. Your film, Rubicon, uh, is uh, settled in Argentina. You also studied in uh, Università del Cine in Argentina. And it's a movie that mainly focuses on migration, am I right? Yeah. So um, I was very interested in this topic because um, it's like a melting pot, uh, Buenos Aires and Argentina. So how, mm, like, you yourself migrated to Argentina because you are from Honduras. So how all this background of yours and uh, the stories that you collected in the, um, like, in your experience, uh, all lead up into this movie. Yeah, so I'm originally from Tegucigalpa, the capital of Honduras, and I moved to Buenos Aires in 2016 to study in Universidad del Cine. And this, what you say about Buenos Aires as a melting pot, I think it's very true, specifically for people from other countries of Latin America. So for me, it's very interesting how Buenos Aires is a city where you can, you can be walking down the street and you hear people speaking in Portuguese, you can hear people speaking uh, different uh, tonalities and accents of uh, Spanish. And so I think as a foreigner, it's also an interesting place to be. And, and so for me, like coming into this film, um, also most of the team that worked on it were also uh, foreigners from other places of Latin America in Buenos Aires. Uh, there were people from Nicaragua, Mexico, Dominican Republic, uh, Colombia, and so there was this idea of trying to convey the the feeling of being a foreigner like the like that experience and to find to find like some uh, formal tools of the cinematic language to express that so like through sound and and through um, editing and so that with that idea came like the possibility of uh, turning Buenos Aires into a fictitious place you know a place that was Buenos Aires but that had the mountains that came from you know our places of origin. So we added uh, fictitious mountains, fictitious uh, soundtracks from different parts of Latin America. And then we created this uh, imaginary place, uh, which was like, which is like the home of us as foreigners. Yeah, it's so interesting. So where exactly did you shot uh, and collected the images that are now in the movie? So all of it was uh, shot in Villa Crespo. It's uh, a district in, in Buenos Aires. The, it was actually filmed, most of it, in my apartment uh, with groups of friends. And then the sounds were collected. For example, the sound man is from Dominic Dominican Republic, and he used to work a lot as, uh, as a sound designer in, in Santo Domingo. And so he had brought with he One day he, he showed me all his sound library and he gave it to me and we thought it was a great idea to somehow someday use this in a film. And so when this uh, project uh, came up, we decided to, uh, to create something with it. And there's also sounds from Mexico. Um, and, and the, the song? The, the, the song is the from song Brazil. The song itself is from Brazil, yes. Uh, the, the song is from Brazil. Uh, the VFX artist is from Colombia. And so the mountains that you see are actually from Cali. And so the, the city kind of becomes a, a collage of all of the, pre, the places from where which we come from. Yeah, I totally agree. It's all, I mean, it, this thing really comes together in the movie. And um, I also very much like the way you went from, let's say, the, the beginning, which is beautiful. It's just beautiful, simple, yet beautiful. And, uh, you know, this interview that you probably had with these people and it purely documentary. So you put the mic on and you recorded, um, I don't know, like what kind of question you asked them, but the, the, the conversation is real and it's documentary, but yet the movie then develops into fiction 
And at the end, again, it goes in a very observational documentary style. I also very much like this, um, this I don't know, it's just cinema that goes on, uh, yeah. that you created for this thematic. So would you talk a little bit about your approach on this? Yeah, so um, uh, when you say like the, the interview, I think that's uh, very interesting how it came to be a part of the movie because uh, the story wasn't created in a linear way, so there was no script either. But we started shooting some scenes. I had uh, taken inspiration from the beginning of Memoria del Subdesarrollo by uh, Tomás Gutiérrez Ale, where in the beginning of the movie, there's a scene where everyone is leaving the airport of Cuba. And it's a very documentary registry of what is happening in that specific moment in time. But there are two characters who are part of the fiction, which then the movie later develops, that are like put into this uh, fictional space. And I was very fascinated by it when I saw it. And I said, I want to try something like this also. And so we started shooting in, in my apartment some scenes that uh, the, the whole part of, the, like the fictional part, we started shooting uh, a little like, trying things out, you know, I liked the way that like the reflections on the mirrors looked. Uh, there was something about that type of framing that I was attracted to. And so we started just filming these shots with no idea of, of any narrative uh, specifically in place. And then uh, this was shot with a digital camera. And then we took out the, the 16 millimeter camera from the university and we shot these scenes again. And we had like this mark of this very strict place where, okay, so this is where the fiction parts, and then we had, because of it being filmed, we couldn't uh, waste so much, uh, uh, so much material, and so we knew, okay, so we were very organized, so this was uh, stage parts, and then we have this amount of uh, material for freedom, you know, so that's a bit how the logic of it was structured, and then we had shot this scene in the car also because, uh, like, we, we, uh, we thought it would be, like, a, a nice thing to have, uh, on film, you know, like the sunrise shot on film, but we also didn't know if it was going to work uh, for the film or not, like it could have not been, but I really liked it. And so while we were editing and editing and editing, it was like, okay, so what's going to happen <laughs> with this very long shot? And my girlfriend, which is the actress who, who plays in the film, she worked as a nanny in, in a place where, in a house where the woman who is in, being interviewed uh, is also is the one that she also worked there, and so she she came up with the idea. She said, "Why don't we talk to to Fela? And since I'm a character in the film, I can interview her. We can have a conversation, and then it connects to whatever you know the rest uh, happens in the film." So we we went to her house and we had a very long conversation with her because she had like so many exciting <laughs> uh, stories about all of the places where she had lived in, and and then we edited that conversation uh, into what. Uh, be put, was put in the in that shot, and the idea for the song actually came because when we were shooting it, uh, we were playing that song uh, on the speakers of the car. We said, "Ah, it would be really cool for <laughs> the movie to start like this with the song. Like it's a very beautiful moment." So for me, uh, it's also uh, the the film is also like for me like a memory of what my life was at that time and what the shooting of that movie was also. And I, that, I think that's how it also very dear to my heart. Let's see. Yeah. So nice when, let's say, the idea at the beginning is not super focused, but the process itself is somehow focused. As you can see, the music made sense in the end in the movie. The music that you were listening, probably, I don't know, editing or talking and reflecting on the movie, it all made sense because once you enter a creative and, I don't know, move mood then you probably everything makes sense and it's so nice i repeat this again how everything in the end sounds and see and looks so beautiful looks super thought through but you were telling me that it, it wasn't like this so i have two more questions <laughs> one is about the title rubicon so um what can you tell me about this so there's this um, idea about the Rubicon as the, a place for no return, you know, like the river where... Yeah, true. Like, you you know that is? this uh, river is actually very close to Lago mm -hmm. somehow. <laughs> it's yeah, not in the same region, but it's uh, it's somehow near. Of course. And so like this, I, I, I like this idea of, of, of a place of no return, of like the idea of a border. And I thought that 
uh, like that theme maybe is a little bit uh, in the movie you know when when you migrate when you leave like they're internally like something happens but not not i mean also physically there's like a point of no return but emotionally also i think migrating comes with uh, like an internal feeling of not being able to return and so that's an idea i'm very attracted to yeah nice and now that you are in uh, hamburg how like do you have any projects coming up yeah so last year this uh, short film actually i think was very educational for me in the sense that i learned uh, a process like a creative process of of working uh, you know with my with my my own means and with the people around me and like not big uh, industrial like production uh, standards which I, I feel like for example my university uh, kind of incentivates you know like the big shoot with like the expensive camera and things like this um, but in making this film I, I learned uh, a way of process in which I'm much more uh, comfortable working with uh, around like throughout time uh, and so I've been shooting a film for two years now. I think it's going to be a, a feature film. You know, it's this thing where you, I don't really know what it is about yet, but the same thing happened with uh, this short, but it's uh, writing itself uh, in the editing. And since, for example, last year we were, um, uh, during the lockdown, there was nothing much to do but uh, film ourselves. And so uh, I think that's the movie that I uh, could do. And so that's the movie that I was doing, you know, so we were finding creative ways of making a film in, inside our apartment with my girlfriend. And now that I'm here, I feel like the movie still has to continue and find a way of uh, incorporating, you know, these, these things that come by chance, but then fiction turns them into like, uh, fiction gives them some sort of logic for them to coexist, you know? And I think this happened also with the short, you know, this conversation that a little bit doesn't have anything to do with the rest of the film, this, documentary footage and then somehow uh, you know editing is what can make all these different materials coexist and so this new film I'm working on is, is like a continuation of this process okay well thank you very much I'm willing to ask you more questions uh, when you will be here in Lago and for the moment I am saying goodbye to you and have a nice day and see you in Lago thank ciao, you. ciao. Ciao, ciao.